This is the MKL Podcast, and today we're going to be talking about education and how to design a curriculum that's practical, that's project-oriented, you know, that companies will look at the students that come out of these programs and say, wow, that's exactly the kind of person we want to hire. This is it. How did you do that? Right. So I'm here with Perry, my colleague. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about what you do here and what your educational background is. All right. Hello, everyone. So I'm Perry Apiluji Urujire. I'm the Associate Director of AI and Computer Engineering Program at CMKL University or Carnegie Mellon University Thailand um, programs. Um, so before I joined CMKL, I was um, studying my master's degree at the University of Manchester, um, graduate in um, digital education and communications. So my passion or my experience involved in education, uh, designing curriculum, um, gam gamification, and those kind of things. Um, yeah, so after I graduated, I decided to to work in higher education. And then at the time, CMKL starting, so I helped them to build a curriculum and work as an instructional designer before. And then recently, yeah, I was um, have a chance to take care of AI and computer engineering program that just uh, first as a bridge uh, in Thailand for the first integrated AI and computer engineering program in Thailand. Yeah. So yeah, I think the AI and computer engineering part is really interesting. And we're going to jump into that in the next section. But before we do that, I'm curious, you studied instructional design, you studied curriculum development. Picture yourself as a, as a student in this, you know, 2020, whatever it is now, right? With this really difficult job market, it's really competitive. You know, what kind of challenges do you think that students face in the job market today? So currently, um, this is what I get the, the experience from have a close connection with industry partner that we work during the R&D projects, right? There, there is a high demand to find a practical engineer to work in real world tasks, right? Most um, most of the students who already graduate, they know all the knowledge, but they cannot apply those skills in real world practice because they don't have those kind of sandbox for them to, to try out. So it's end up them learning so many courses in the class and doing their senior project at the end of the year. And then in some point, their senior project couldn't go anywhere, right? They just store in their desktop, laptop, without even implementing in real world application, so or use in any industry, because the student don't know about the business side of things or how to pitch their projects or how to get the funding, um, those kind of things. It's really a pain for 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 the graduates as well, and uh, and also some of the. Um, skill that they learn throughout their, their undergrads they didn't get updated in terms of the, the tools or application of the industry because the world is moving so fast right it's changing every day we've got generative AI or chat GPT now helping out but uh, in a sense sometimes the students are learning of some developed content in 20 or 30 years ago and it's not updated yet so that therefore um, there is a demand from industry that hey higher education we have to help to corroborate this knowledge and make it happen by integrating the knowledge and the real um, tasks together those kind of thing you know I think that's great and, and I think it's spot on to what Myself, when I was working in industry, I would often say, just show me what you've done. Actually, your resume, all of these theoretical things, these numbers, these GPAs, it's great, it's useful, but I always thought if you could just send me an example of something you've actually done, uh, then I can assess what you can actually do here uh, for me. Um, so does that sound like maybe how the university here tries to prepare their students for success? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so. In at CMKL, right, we we kind of develop the 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 learning and teaching approach that different from other university. I can say that because we we use the first competency based curriculum in in Thailand that actually give the degree for the student. So. Um, so instead of the student will study one courses for three month long, we shop down those courses into a small modules and we call it competency. So each competency will have a dedicated knowledge topic and skill 
really clear. And then we have a defined assessment for each skill. So when the student complete one competency, it will um, the, um, the industry or the employ employee can, can see clearly that what kind of skill the student have, right? And then, so it's very clear, it's very um, personalized as well, because I think that we uh, here at our university, we don't try to um, build a student in the same patterns. So we are not a cookie cutter that we want to build a student to be the same, but we want to provide them the option and to be more personalized in, in terms of their learning. So they, the student can choose those competencies from their own interests and their expertise. For example, if they want to be the expert in uh, cybersecurity, they can enroll more in the competency under security pillar, or if they want to be the game engineer, they can study more in human-centered design pillar. Yeah, that's the example. Yeah, no, this is great. Um, what I hear from this is that it's a very modular curriculum, which yeah. makes it customizable, which means every student can come out as a very distinct individual and really differentiate themselves. And I think one of the ways that you can test the waters with this kind of approach to education is through shorter term programs um, like the AICE Warp Bootcamp. So maybe we'll jump into that now. Maybe just start off by describing what is the Warp Bootcamp? What are the learning outcomes? What's the goal that a student would walk in without and they would walk out with? All right, um, maybe start from the, the the name of the bootcamp called WARP. People might wondering what does it actually mean, WARP? So you, you, you know WARP, right? So you disappear from this place and then to another place. So we try to simulate this experience that the higher education, uh, I mean, the the high school student, they kind of don't know what experience it will be to study in undergraduate program in AI engineering. So we kind of simulate those experience of WAP them to be in this um, experience. So we call it WAP, um, AIC WAP. So this is a, like, uh, like you said, it's three weeks, very intensive camp. So it's, um, the student will learning um, five competencies so they can select from uh, the competency that they want to study. And the, the, the idea that we, we start this camp because we can see that there's a lot of demands from um, the student who um, interested in this AI and computer engineering field and they don't know that this field it's fits for them or not it's, it's for them uh, or they really into this so we want to try out this and, and give them an experience that oh if you want to study in this field these are the knowledge or these are the assessment or this is the experience they, they might get if, if they, they, they ent in, uh, get into the program. So that's why we starting building the WA program. And it's now is currently our third year. Our first year we start during the COVID time. So we have it um, on online. Um, it's very fun because we have those simulation environment. We use a gather, like the platform called gather. So the student can connect and learn from the expertise. Um, it, it was fun. We've got um, a lot of students joining from abroad as well, even from Singapore, right? And then uh, on later years, we have it on site. So we, we've got a lot, a lot of students, both international and Thai joining. So it was fun. You know, it reminds me of, uh, you know, like buying a car is always really stressful because it's such an expensive investment. And so what you do is you, you go to all these different car dealerships and you take it for a test drive. When it comes to education, you know, it's a four year commitment or sometimes only three in our program. You can accelerate things pretty quickly. But would you say the warp program might be a good example of test driving this project oriented perspective as a way to sort of feel out does this fit my style is this the kind of thing i want to invest in yeah 100 percent um so instead of um you know enrolling to the true four years or three years of um, aic program you can just spend three weeks um with our uh distinguished um professors like engineer in resident and we've got um, the uh, instructor who can give a workshop to the student as well. So those, um, the student will be experienced learning through the lectures, the lab, um, the, the discussion, the recitation, and also they, they will work on the AI projects with their teammates. So we will have dedicating um, uh, a coach for them to help them craft up the AI and innovation projects so they can work together and meet 
new friends and the one who ha who share the same values. And it's interesting. Uh, I'm tempted to jump into the idea of meeting friends and building networks. But before we do that, there's something else you mentioned, which is that this program focuses on AI, in particular AI and engineering. AI is one of those nebulous terms, right? Where when marketers get a hold of certain words, they, they stretch them out and they dilute the meaning of that word. I, I do think AI is really important for what it is. And I was just wondering if you could tell me why Warp focuses on AI in particular. So I don't know how to answer that AI because to me, it's a pro and a con, right? Can AI can give you a lot of benefits and sometimes AI doesn't be the solution of everything as well. So it's about you understand the application of AI and use it for the right um, the right purposes, those kind of things. Would you say that our program understands not only what AI can do, but also the constraints of AI and how to prepare our students to operate within what it can and cannot do? Yeah, so um, when, when, when you said about AI, what kind of knowledge should we give to the students as well to, to help them use the AI correctly and ethical in an ethical way, right? So um, under the curriculum pillar, we have like the focus in AI, cybersecurity, human-centered design, and cyber, um, as, uh, scalable system. Right. So when we talk about AI, we were introducing them what are the application that you, they will be learning, like um, autonomous agent, computer vision, those kind of um, AI that they, they, they can try out to use in different fields or industry or application domain, right? And we will teach them about cybersecurity as well. This is very important. I think it's it's a lot of demands in our industry that um, we have to learn how to protect the data or the, the phishing or scamming and how to write the system that can protect this kind of um, scamming, right? And then we have human-centered design, which is like, it's very important because we will need to understand, we will teach the student to understand the user to use the AI, right? Instead of use a AI successfully, we have to understand uh, the user and how we design some technologies to serve the human um, needs. Yeah, no, this is this is great. Uh, I was actually raised by a, an electrical engineer who often would sort of comment on how engineers, they design things to function, but they often forget that actually a human has to use this thing that you've designed. Is that what you mean by uh, yeah, human yeah. oriented design or yeah. human centered design? Yeah, so we have to think about the de design, the, the, the use case, the, we have to do user research and the student will understand how um, we apply these technologies in the, the real user use case. Yeah. You know, this might be a good time for us to shift into the WARP program uh, more specifically. Uh, there are actually five competencies in the WARP program. Maybe you could list them all out and give us a, a quick example of, of what that looks like in the real world. We have five competency um, that offer during the WAP. The first one would be cybersecurity. So it's focusing on the data security, integrity, and privacy. So the student will be learning the techniques like data encryptions and message authentication through that. Um, it's very interesting. And I think this is a new thing for high school who never experienced this view. The second competency will be game design. So it's cover the game design process from inception to production, like emphasizing on creativity and practical applications as well. Um, so the student who um, love to play great games, now they will learn how to make a games or what are the technologies behind those game building. Right. And the third one, actually, it's um, it's your competency, right, Justin? It's design thinking. Can you share about that? Yeah, I was alluding to it a little bit earlier in our conversation, but the thing with technology is people actually have to figure out how to apply that technology to solve problems in their own lives. And so design thinking is all about going through this process of empathizing with who's going to use the technology figuring out why they're going to use it and what problems and pain points in their lives that that's going to solve. And then you can ideate a whole bunch of creative solutions and you can then look at the feasibility of those solutions. So you can prototype, you can kind of see what it'll look like in action. Um, often what happens at this stage is you realize, oh, that was a really cool idea, but, and then you throw it out 
and you go to the next one and you try to prototype it again. And so you kind of trial and error your way to a solution that not only leverages the technology, but also understands the human who's actually gonna have to use it to solve a problem and to make sure that it's easy to use. So yeah, I'll pass it back to you for the fourth competency. Yeah, so the first one is um, reinforcement learning. So um, the instructor will teach the student about AI agents to learn through trials and errors, covering the concept like Q learning or value-based method. This, it sounds very technical, right? But it's more about like um, machine learning and, and um, those kind of AI agents. Uh, Yes, very interesting. And the fifth one is geographic computing. So um, the student will explore the representing geographic information in computer program and creating interactive uh, web maps. So in case some student want to know what are the technologies behind those Google Maps or navigate navigators, right? The student will learn um, from this competency. It's very interesting. So like these uh, five competencies like will be taught by our distinguished faculties and professor from Sim Cal University who have a lot of backgrounds in the field. So um, the student will get a lot of experience interacting with these um, amazing um, instructor and having the the time to have discussion with them and sharing their passion or even had a conversation in terms of what kind of project they want to work so there will be their project advices as well yeah no that sounds great so now that we're talking about we're talking about kind of the theory behind all of this like a very curriculum based perspective so let's shift the camera to the, the actual students as they experience the program what kind of things, what kind of activities will the students be doing? What does it look like as a student in this program? All right, so um, of course, like they they will come from different um, backgrounds, right? The student can be like a Thai student, international student as well, they join, and then um, they will select the competency, three out of five competency uh, from their interests. Oh, so I, I'm just gonna jump in here real quick. So they actually have some choice of these five, they can pick three? Yes, absolutely, because this is the idea how we done in our AIC program as well. We want to give them authority and sense of autonomy of choosing on on their learning um, path so they can choose what they want to study from their interests and expertise so this is why we adopt this through our work program so of course they can choose um, from from their interests and um, if they don't have class during other time they can work on their project so no worry if they you feel like um, they don't have anything to do no of course they, they have project that they have to talk with their friends or um, the instructor yeah so maybe this will be the final point on the actual program design you mentioned projects um, can you think of any project examples from past work programs that really stood out to you or that were super interesting? Actually, last year, uh, one group of the students even created a PM 2.5 detection gadget, right? And then use the AI to leverage the data and, and, and can predict like what um, the level of PM 2.5 uh, will be in, in a week those kind of things so it's very interesting and they even built a prototype within like um weeks so it's very impressive so at could that you time. could you give an example of like in from a business perspective like in the real world this pm25 what's the what's the benefit of being able to detect it accurately and how is that used i think i i think it's more um better for in in terms of society impact as well because not everyone can afford um those um detector gadget right so if they know how to build it these can help a lot in in the north area that we have uh, they have like limited resources or funding so they can build it from very um, low cost budget and they learn how to integrate this to in terms of um, community basically they can build it themselves so they, they found a really cheap low cost easy way to build this maybe just like with a raspberry pi or something yeah, or, yeah. is that it yeah. yeah. Now that's super cool. All right. So let's move on to the final thing. So, you know, as a student, if I were signing up for this program, I would kind of be wondering, okay, when I look back on this program, how will it have changed my own life, my own sort of uh, professional career path or my educational career path? So what, what would you say are the, are the biggest benefits that participants will realize from participating? So I think the student will be able to learn on the, the knowledge content that 
they will not experience from the any uh, high school because this is like the the content that we offer through the WAP program we selected from our um, undergraduate program curriculum so the student will be experienced that in in um, in those competency in much deeper um, so they can deep dive into the the content or the assessment that they never uh, tried before or even the new programming languages that they will learn through those uh, assessment assignments by faculties. They learn soft skills as well because um, they will learn to be like uh, leaders and uh, initiators or um, creative uh, creative thinking as well so improve on that skill and more than that they can form uh, a friendship a friend from other school as well networking is one of those things that um, you know we we all know how important it is but it's it's very hard to quantify or enunciate it exactly but yeah I do think working together on projects it's the most important professional skill um, because when you get out into the real workforce, um, you'll have to figure out how to get a whole bunch of uh, different personalities pointed in the same direction. And um, yeah, it's a great skill. Um, one, one other thing that the project orientation had me thinking about is if I was looking at a student's resume, their application materials, does this project, is it something that they could put on a college application, a university application to say, hey, look, um, I've actually practiced what I preach. I've done something in the real world. Yeah, true. Be um, that's correct. Because when they graduate, we got like uh, certification, right? What they have done and then they can write it on their resume or portfolio of what they have done throughout the programs. Like they have real example of what tools they, they learn and then they use it throughout the camp as well. So this is a very beneficial because um, when they get into university, it's not just about the, the grades or the GPA, how much they got, but they, um, the, most of the university will look through the qualifications of the experience they gain um, out from the classroom setting, like the experience they gain throughout the summer times and you know, what kind of soft skill they develop through that. Because this is very essential uh, for the student in the 21st century that they should have um, this kind of character of the leadership, resilient, uh, negoci negotiators, and business. And they have to understand this kind of um, skill. Yeah. Well, you know, your English is good enough to be here uh, on this podcast. Um, how important do you think the student's English level is when it comes to their success? And is this program run in Thai or is it run in English? Uh, our program will be in English running because our program and our university, it's an uh, international program and everything will be conducted in, in English, right? I think it's very important. And um, if the student from Thai school concerned about these, I don't, I can guarantee that you don't have to worry about it because previously uh, we've got a lot of students from Thai school joining as well. At first they might be shy, but after that they got adjust and adapt to the friends and our supporting staff and faculty try to help them to, to overcome that. And then we have um, office hour dedicating for these students well if they have any problem they can just like knock in and then come knock and then talk to our instructor and then consult more and i think the environment will help the student to to feel more comfortable using english here building confidence is the key to, to learning languages you just have to get put yourself out there and uh, look a little silly and make mistakes but now it sounds like a great way for students to improve their linguistic skills as well so we're actually getting pretty close to time here Maybe we'll wrap it up. You can let people know how to apply to the program, any details about the logistics of just getting involved. Right. Um, so if the student interested to join the WAP program, now we open for registration. Um, you can go to cmkl.ac.th directly, or you can look through our Facebook page. Um, we have the link there so you can apply. Um, so the camp start from July 1st to July 19 is three weeks um, in total. So Monday to Friday from nine to five. So. Of course, like so many activities, so many competency, and the student will learn a lot, meeting friends, uh, have support from faculty, engineering residents, and even our staff as well. So if you're interested, please join us. Um, for the tuition for that, uh, it would be um, th 35,000 baht per one student. Yes. 
Well, that was a lot of fun. So um, maybe we could close on maybe some kind of an anecdote or some kind of a, a funny thought or a funny story. Maybe did anything happen in any of these boot camps that you thought was really unusual or interesting? Or did any students have like crazy project ideas that are really fun? Okay, so I, I want to tell it out about this. Um, actually, it's not relating to the competency itself, but it's more about the facilities and the food that we offer for the students. So we have the best food. I can guarantee that your kids will come and then have the best lunch. And even our students loved it. Like we, we have donuts as a break, right? And then one student just ate more than five donuts. And then I have to say that, oh, you ate so much donuts. I, and he said, oh, I have so much fun. I ate a lot. I, that's why this is something I want to share that um, we same cows we are a very close community. So everyone, uh, um, you, you can feel a sense of um, home here and your, your, your children will be safe here as well. And, and it's it just the fact that you, you feel safe and you feel relaxed um, throughout the experience here. So we'll tell we'll tell the students then that uh, free donuts is, is definitely the yeah it's free big, donuts the big perk. and yeah and, we, and your project idea will have to be like a smart treadmill or something to uh, to yeah. undo the damage that uh, that's been done. yeah I'm looking for the very no innovative projects this year as well as uh, yeah I was very excited um, to to have the student joy yeah. All right, everybody. Well, thanks very much for tuning in today. Don't forget to check the links down below for the AICE Warp Bootcamp program. And don't forget CMKL podcast. Yeah, we're really looking forward to seeing you all there. And uh, we'll see you in the next episode as well. Until next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.